In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use some cheap wireless IP cameras with XSplit. Okay guys, first thing we need to do is actually get one of these IP cameras. Where do we go? Of course we go to Amazon because of course we do. So we go to amazon.com and let's search for IP camera wireless. And there's actually quite a few options out there. Most of these are for security. So you'll see crazy stuff like LEDs and antennas and all that garbage. We don't need any of that stuff. This is our guy. This is the one we're gonna pick because it's cheap less than 25 bucks for one of these cameras and very popular. You can see over 25,000 reviews and most of those are five are five star reviews. So let's go ahead and select that. Now I bought the two pack because I am using them for player cams. I have a lot of fighting game tournaments in my place and I have a couple of head to head fighting game cabs where players are on either side and you can't get both with one camera. So I got this two pack. What is going on with this photo? It's not supposed to look like that. What? Anyway, that was that was weird. It's like all squished. It, whatever. Um, doesn't matter if you buy one or two. The one thing that you have to note though is that these cameras won't actually work with XSplit or right out of the gate. And that's because you need RTSP enabled and the default firmware doesn't have it. But don't fear, it's very easy to get and install. Um, we're gonna go to Y, we're gonna search for Y's camera, RTSP firmware. Now there's some good videos here. I've actually seen this lawn.tv one, but they're not going to show you how to use an XSplit in OBS. And I'm not going to drag you to another video after you're already watching mine. Um, so the way I found it is I clicked on this can't find or stream RTSP. Then I went to read this article and here's actually where it talks about RTSP. He, uh, <laughs> I should probably mention, I created a tiny URL dot com and if you type wise you can't type or crap so if you go to tinyurl.com slash wise rtsp it'll go to the same page i was just on it's kind of a shortcut for you guys so it goes over what rtsp is real time streaming protocol blah 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 there's two versions of the firmware one with it one without i don't know why who cares now there's also there's <laughs> there's also two uh, files to choose from one is for the camera that we're we're using and another one's for the one that has the cam, I mean the uh, pan capabilities, but we don't give a shit about that because that costs more and we don't need it to pan. So the important thing is um, that we download this and then we're gonna extract the file in it. I'm just gonna go back to the downloads directory and we have to rename this guy. So rename it demo. Don't ask me why it's just not called demo.bin on the inside, but once we have it renamed demo.bin, then we're gonna copy it over to our micro USB. And since so that's done, let's go back to the web page here. And you'll see that we insert the micro USB into the camera with the power unplugged. Now with the power unplugged, I mean, you, you guys can read, right? It's pretty straightforward. You put the micro USB in here, unplug the power, hold down this little setup button and then plug in the power and then basically wait for the light to turn blue and just let it sit there. After about, I don't know, five minutes or so, the camera will reboot and it'll be good to go. Now you will have to use the Wise app for your iPhone or iOS, I'm sorry, your iOS or your Android um, to set this up because without it, it won't just work. So I will show you how to do that in a separate video. I'm gonna have to record my uh, iOS stuff separately, but you'll see that in a bit. And once we get the RTSP set up, then we can move on to XSplit. Okay, so here we have the Wise app. This is the iOS version, but there is no reason for me to believe that the Android version isn't identical to this one. Now, as you can see, I already have both the cameras installed and configured. When you first start the app, I'm pretty sure, I did it a couple of days ago, I'm pretty sure that it asks you to set up the first device automatically. If it doesn't, or if you want to add a second one, you can touch those three little dots in the upper right hand corner. It'll bring up a menu and you want to select add a product and then the top option, Wise Cam. And then it will just walk you right through 
adding the camera to your iOS or Android Wise app. Should be very straightforward, shouldn't be a problem at all. So we're going to cancel and just go back to the main menu here. And we're gonna select the blue cam. Now again, it's already configured, but I'm gonna show you the things that you wanna make sure to either select or deselect. First thing you wanna do is go to the more option there and then make sure that motion tagging is off. Right now it's disabled, but let me enable it just to show you what it looks like. If it's enabled like that, you see that green version of the motion tagging square. You wanna to touch it to make sure that it's off. Now, if it's on, you'll see these weird green boxes that outline moving objects that are in the camera sight. So anytime somebody moves in front of it or like a cat or a box, anything wind blows, a tree or whatever, it will put a little green box around it and say, hey, look, there's some motion here in this area. Make sure to pay attention to it. But because we're not using it as a security camera, we don't need that and it's actually very annoying. So, so make sure to turn that off. The other things you wanna do is go to the, go to the uh, settings, which is the upper right hand cog, and you wanna to go to advanced settings and then turn off the timestamp and the WISE logo, which I'm turning on just to show you. Um, that's probably how they are by default. You wanna disable both of those. That takes off, as you would guess, the time the timestamp that's always on there and the WISE logo, which you probably don't want. And also the night vision mode, it's probably on auto. Go ahead and turn it off. If you don't and you get into a situation where you have a little bit too low of light, it might click into night vision mode and then you'll get that weird green and gray video that it's not very pleasing. So make sure to turn that off. The main thing we are here for though is the RTSP option. Right now it's on, but it's normally off when you first get to this. So we're gonna go to RTSP at the very bottom, turn it on. And when you first do this, it's going to ask you to generate a username and password. So put in anything you want. I put in S69 test for my username and S69 test as my password, but you can put in anything you want. And then it's going to follow that with an at symbol and put the IP address, the local IP address of the camera. Mine is 192.168.1.152 for one camera and then 154 for the other camera. And that's automatically assigned. So this URL at the bottom, that RTSP colon slash slash URL, you're going to have to know in order to enter that into XSplit because that's how it's going to find the camera. So either take a screenshot or write it down or just have your phone handy or whatever you need because you will need to know that big long URL. So once you have that RTSP enabled and you have that URL noted, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go back to the XSplit uh, application and then add the RTSP camera or both of them actually as sources. So let's take a look. Now that we have RTSP enabled on the cams, we can add them as sources into XSplit. What you're looking at here is just a screenshot, but it's meant to represent the game video. This would be your Elgato or whatever other capture device you're using. We're gonna make the game video a little bit smaller here so that we can fit a couple of player cams up here. Now we're gonna go down to add source, streams, IP camera. Here's where you put the URL from earlier on the Wise app. Uh, it consists of your username, and password, which is S69, S69 test for me. And then at symbol and your IP address for the cameras, which is 192.168.1.152 for the first cam, and then slash live. There are several different protocols here, just ignore them, it's TCP is fine, just click okay. And then a couple of seconds here, there it is. So there's our camera, looks pretty good. Now you'll notice it's widescreen, and if that works for you, you're pretty much done. You know, place it wherever you want. Make the, you can actually, you don't even need to make it smaller. If you're just wanting to put it, get hold of it here, you can, you know, resize it however you'd like. You can use a screen screen, whatever you need to do. But for our purposes, or at least for my purpose, I need it as a player cam, and it's a little too wide. We don't really need all this extraneous garbage around here. By the way, that's my garage arcade, and it's, Probably should have cleaned it up a little bit better, but eh, too late. I'm already doing this video. Um, so there's a couple of ways I can make it a little bit more square and kind of cut off the sides. One is it just overlap, right? Put it like this and then move the uh, camera below the game video and then there you go. But that's not a very elegant solution and it frankly, it's not, it's not a good way to do it. You could do it like that in a pinch, but if you take a little bit more time, what you can do is, is right click. Oh, one thing I should note is you probably want to disable 
the audio on the cam because if you don't, it'll interfere with the game audio and then you'll get echoes and it'll just sound terrible. So go ahead and disable that on the IP cam. But under layout, there's an option to do some cropping here. You can crop the top or bottom, left and right. We're gonna crop the left and right parts. See, if I click the left part, it brings in the left side of the cam, or you can just type in a number. I know about 140 is okay for this cam, and then 140 on the right side, and oh, it didn't take 140. There we go, so it's a little bit more square. Now, you, the camera itself isn't positioned exactly right, so you can go and mess with it, of course. Uh, maybe there's a little bit too much, too much on the top, so let's cut off about 20 there. That looks pretty good. So we can take this and then move it over here. And that, that's one of our player cams. We can adjust the game video, or you can actually, just because you crop it, you can still move the size of the cam. Um, but you don't want to get too small, you can't see anything. But you know, play with this any way you'd like. XSplit's pretty good about letting you snap um, to the right position, so that looks pretty good. So let's add the second camera, same way. That's S69 test. S69 test for the username and password at the, the uh, IP address 192.168.1. This one's 154 slash live. And click OK. And there it is. So this is the player two cam or the red cam. Again, let's get it to match that other one. So we'll right click, go to IP cam, disable the audio first, and then go to layout. And for the top, we have 20. The side we had 140, and then the other side we had one. Whoops, well, it doesn't want to take that side. 140. There we go. So now we have it the same dimensions as the other one. Actually, I resized this one, didn't I? So <laughs> I did. When I resized it, I kind of messed it up. Um, there's actually a width and a height here, and they're probably not the same. 395 or 360. Three, so this, this should be 360. We can get it to match again. All right, so 360, and what was this one? 395, okay. 395, there we go. Now this should be the same, ish. What happened now? Oh, these changed now because they changed the other ones. Well, it's good that I'm doing this. You can see that you can actually um, mess things up. There it is, okay. So if you're gonna re, I what I would do is resize one the way you want and then make the other one match, no big deal. So let's make this a little bit smaller and then bring this up a little bit. And there you go, player cams. And honestly, you're done here, but if you wanna make it a little bit nicer, you can right click on these and there's some effects. One particular effect that I wanna show you is shape, leave it square, and then you can add a little border. So let's add like a little, let's add like a border size of two. And because this is the blue cam, let's put a blue border on that. And then go to this cam, shape, border of two, and give it a red border, or it's pure red. There it is. There you go, that looks pretty good. So now you have your two player cams with a little border and uh, your game video. Here you can put your logos or whatever kind of tournament information you want. Um, and there's some other spaces here too. You can mess with the layout, but the important thing is we got our cheap IP cameras into XSplit they cost us less than 25 bucks a pop. And as a bonus, they don't eat up any USB bandwidth. So if you're on a laptop or a lesser machine that doesn't have a lot of USB bandwidth and you can't get like multiple cameras into your stream because your computer just can't see that much, this is a great alternative. Plus another side, you know, side benefit of this, and this is the main reason that I'm doing this, is that it allows you to move your uh, laptop or your streaming box really far away from the setup and still get player cams. Now there's ways to extend your HDMI video. It's not as easy to extend your USB uh, cameras. You can do it, but it's just not as easy. So this, this is a really easy way to do it. Anyway guys, hope you learned something. Uh, if you liked the video, please give me a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. So until next time. Thank you.